Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, this video is about plectrums and more specifically plectrums for classical mandolin playing. I received many questions about plectrums, so I thought it would be useful to show uh, what the possibilities are, what the different shapes are, the materials, and uh, let you hear what they sound like. Uh, we have different materials here. Um, these are all old uh, tortoiseshell plectrums, uh, then some celluloid plectrums, nylon plectrums, horn plectrums, imitation ivory. Um, so over the years many materials were used and I think overall in my experience what sounds the best are uh, tortoiseshell, the real tortoiseshell uh, plectrums and also uh, celluloid. But for the celluloid there is also a big difference in different types of celluloid. Some are too soft and are not suitable for making plectrums. Uh, but actually the same is for tortoiseshell. You, you can also find tortoiseshell plectrums which are too soft and, and too brittle and so not, not every kind of tortoiseshell is uh, suitable for making plectrum out of. So let's try a few. But before we start, um, if you listen to the playing, it would be best if you listen through headphones or earphones or connect uh, your computer of, or phone to a, a stereo system because if you just listen through the speakers of a laptop or an iPod or, or, or a, a phone uh, that will really not give you a good, a good impression of what this all sounds like. So let's see. Um, so let's start with a um, Roman type of flectrums which is the kind I get most of the questions for. Um, these are quite large, about six and a half centimeter length. I think that is the largest type you can find or make. Um, then we have smaller types. This one, the smallest one here is four and a half centimeter. Um, you have them in different thicknesses. Uh, different shapes of uh, the points, they, they can be more pointed or more rounded and all that will affect the sound on your mandolin. So it is very difficult to say exactly what combination you need because it will depend on uh, the thickness of the material, the material itself, because uh, even if it's tortoiseshell uh, a light one like this will not have the same sound as a dark one like this. So it, it's all a combination, you have to try um, the thickness, the how much the point is rounded, or you might also prefer a very sharp point. Then the plectrum itself, the, the thickness uh, can go from very thin like uh, 0.6 of a millimeter until almost 2 millimeters. Um, but if you use a plectrum of two millimeters, of course, you will have to make it round like this one. I don't know if you, if you can see it, but so this is in the middle. It's uh, like one and a half millimeter, and then this is rounded all over. So it still has very sharp edges all all uh, all around. Um, this is one, this is a rounded one, this is an old one, this is also round. So this is nearly two, two millimeters thick, I think, in the middle. But of course it gets thinner towards the point and uh, it's, it, it has a very sharp point uh, and it's very highly polished. So let's try some of these. This is just a standard one. This is 0.7 of a millimeter thick and the points are, well, as you see, it's not very pointed, it's a little bit rounded. And what is important always is that the edges of the plectrum should always be very smooth. If you just file them and then just play like that, you will hear that it's not, not smooth. It will make scratchy noises on, on, the, on the strings. Now, I will play these on a 
classical mandolin with round wound strings. This is what I prefer. Of course, if you use polished strings or flat wound strings, of course it will make a different sound. But I cannot try all these plectrums on different kinds of mandolins, that would be too complicated. So I just use it on the type of string I prefer, just a normal classical hamburger mandolin with round wound um, steel strings. So let's see. This is quite bright sound. This is what I quite like actually. Now if we take approximately the same plectrum but much thicker, this one, this is about 1.7, so this, this is a millimeter thicker than that one. For the rest the shape of the point is not that different. It's, it's very close to the other one. So you will see that the thicker plectrum makes a much more rounded sound on a mandolin. I don't think this sounds very well. This is the the sound it makes. Uh, this is for me is the plectrum is too thick. It should be thinner at the edges and maybe the point a little sharper. And that is what we get uh, with, for instance, this plectrum. It's as as thick as this one. It's just that it's much more pointy. Uh, the, the points are much sharper uh, and towards the edge it's much much thinner but in the middle it's the same thick was a the thickness as this one another possibility. Um, now this one quite a bit smaller. I've used it uh, for many years and repolished it and uh, it's still a good size. Uh, that's not a problem to play. It's just that now at the moment I think the points are getting a little bit too rounded. So I, I should sharpen it again and also make the plectrum a little narrower. You hear on just normal playing it's still okay. But on tremolo you get little side noise that I don't really like. I think that is because the plectrum is a little bit too wide and that is mainly uh, at the point here. So the, the, the part that touches the string. Because the width of the plectrum further upwards here where you hold it, that, that is not really a problem. That doesn't determine the sound so much. It's just at the point here, it, it's, quite, it's becoming quite wide actually. So I should make this a little narrower. Um, I could try all these, they, they will have very similar sounds. Um, I'll show you this, this is a smaller one. But as you see, if you compare it to that one, actually up until there, it's the same thing. This point and that point are quite similar. 
So if your plectrum becomes shorter, like this one, then you see the point gets wider as well here. So And that, that changes the sound. So this one and this one, they will sound more similar than this one and this one, because this is wider. And here the, the points are quite the same. So they will feel different in the hand, of course, because this is quite a bit smaller. But the sound, the sound is still quite good. This is quite good for tremolo. I, I really like the, the, the clean sound it uh, produces, uh, this one. Um, these are yet older than, than this one. I found this in an old mandolin case and I haven't done anything to them. They were just like this and the edges are not really smooth. But this one still sounds quite good. <laughs> So you would expect much more bright sound from this plectrum, but it's it's still quite warm because it's really thick. It's a very thick. It's in in the middle. It's about one millimeter, which is thick for such a small plectrum, and then it's rounded towards the edges. So that makes quite a nice sound. Um, this is one. This is actually half a Roman plectrum because it was a large one like this but there was a one tip broken off so I made it, I reshaped it so it can still be used of course only this side, not, not at this side. These are different types, I, I think these were made actually for oud, for, for, for another instrument but they can still be used on mandolin. This is tortoiseshell uh, and it, it's similar to that, it's only that it feels different because it's uh, much narrower. Feels a bit strange to me, but it's just because of the width and the length. But the sound is sound is not bad. I would change the points. I think a little more, uh, a little more sharp. Now this is something. I suppose they made it in order to to change uh, the sound when you were playing. So you you, you could have three plectrums in one. And. At this moment, the points are exactly the same. But if you want to have a different sound, then you could just use it and while playing, just turn it and, and use another point. But this is just uh, a rarity. I don't think that's really uh, practical for, for playing. It feels a bit strange too. Now let's have a look at the uh, Neapolitan shapes of plectrums. So what is the difference between the Neapolitan shapes and the Roman shapes? Mainly these have two points, but that's not the only thing. It's also because of the length, it will feel different and the, the balance in your hand will, will make a difference. Also a plectrum that is a little longer, uh, because it touches your finger here, 
it affects the, the flexibility of the plectrum, so that will be a little different. But as long as you hold the plectrum this way, you can actually play any of these plectrums. It's just, I see some people holding the plectrum very differently, and uh, for instance, they have a smaller type of plectrum like this, and when, when you use it like that, then this would not be possible with, with a Roman plectrum, because it would have to stick out, and, and here it's completely covered with your fingers. So if you do that, then it would be difficult to use a Roman plectrum. Um, so let, let's look at these. Um, this is actually, this doesn't sound, I found it in a, um, in a case of an old mandolin. And it's very good tortoiseshell, but the shape is, is too big, it's too wide, it's too thick. So, but this is interesting, if you find it, you can reshape it and you can make a very good plectrum out of that. This is about the same, it's a little better than that, but the edges are not really smooth, so when you play it... Uh, actually, it doesn't sound so bad, but it, th this could be improved. Um, these, I found these in the 1980s in, in a music shop, and they are nicely shaped, really smooth, the edges, and, and very nice finish on them. Um, it's just, for me, they are, they are a little too wide here. Like this, the sound is very good. It's just for tremolo. For the tremolo, I get too much plectrum noise, and that is just because the, the tip is a bit too wide. So if you reshape these, these could be quite good plectrums. This is another one. It was together with that, just smaller, but it's not it's not playable as it is because it, it's too thick and, and the edges are not smooth. But it's a good piece of tortoiseshell to make another plectrum of. Now this one is quite interesting. It has almost exactly the same shape as Roman plectrum. You see it's like half of a Roman plectrum. So this is quite nice, I quite like this. It's only this one is a little bit too thin. Other than that, it, it would be excellent. bright sound if you like a bright sound then uh, something like this would be nice I think this is a, probably about 0.6 or 0.65 of millimeter it's, it's, it's less than 0.7 this is something similar a bit smaller but this is even thinner this is too thin actually Here you really get a lot of plectrum noise. It would be nice for practicing tremolo, because you have a very flexible point, so that, that's quite easy to play tremolo. This one is the same, actually. It's also really thin. scratching on, on the strings so that's that's not so good this is too thin now next one this is quite interesting you see this is really small this once it was this shape and someone made it quite a bit shorter and that someone was uh, the famous French mandolin virtuoso André Saint-Clivier he gave me this plectrum uh, about 30 years ago and just as a model of what he uses and um, what is interesting about this is that because he made it so much smaller it becomes less flexible 
So even if you have quite a thin plectrum, um, I think it's about the same thickness as that one. So if you make it smaller, it becomes less flexible. It's much, much harder to, to bend it and you get a fuller sound out of it. So he still has quite a um, sharp point at it, but it produces quite a good sound. Pecoraro mandolins and they already have a very bright sound and then in combination with this plectrum makes for very makes for a very bright sound but a very clean sound it's it's very good um, next ones here I think this shape is more meant to to be used on the guitar because it's even wider than than some of these and this is an old one this is tortoiseshell this is about the same but in celluloid um, the sound is not bad. It's just for tremolo, it's, it's less suitable, I think. See, with the tremolo you get a lot of plectrum noise, actually. This is about the same, it's just, this is celluloid. sound. Um, I don't think we tried these actually. Um, these are Roman plectrums but in celluloid. So these are made in the 1940s and I think this is from the 70s. Uh, this one is no good actually. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not even sure it is celluloid. The sound is really bad. <laughs> It's quite thick and uh, the edges are not rounded and it's, it sounds really bad. This one is much better. This is celluloid, but a little too thin. So the side noises are quite remarkable with this, this is not so good. Just for practicing tremolo, this is an excellent flexible plectrum. This one is better, it's also celluloid, but thicker than that one. It's just a little bit too bright. It should should have been just a fraction thicker. Um, what else do we have? Celluloid Neapolitan types of plectrum. Um, these are quite new, recent. Galley produces them. You can still buy them. This is a thin one, medium and heavy. 0.6 of a millimeter, 0.7 of a millimeter, and one millimeter. These are quite nice. Also the quality of the celluloid is quite good. So this is the thin one. For me this is too bright. This is really flexible. But it's interesting to practice tremolo. If you start practicing tremolo this can be very useful. Uh, then the medium one sounds much better.
bright if you like it less bright a little more rounded then the thick one would be better for you this is one millimeter These are old celluloid plectrums, but really no good, they are way too thin. Again, for practicing tremolo, it's very useful, then, then you have no resistance when you play. So this is when you just start practicing tremolo, something very thin like this would, would really help. But the sound it makes is, no, uh, is not, very, not very nice. Um, these are some smaller um, celluloid Neapolitan type of plectrum. This is quite rounded and quite thin. See, it's always a combination of the thickness of the plectrum and the shape of the point. So the, the thinner your plectrum is, the more you should round the, the tip of the plectrum. Because if, if, it's, if it's thin and very sharp, then you get something like this, and that, that will become too bright. Um, and if your plectrum is very thick, you, you can do that, like this one. You have very thick plectrum and then you can make a very sharp point and that will compensate for the for the sound of the of the of the thick material. When it's really thin, you really want to round it a little more to get uh, to compensate the, the thin sound and make it more round with the, with the shape of the tip. But it also depends on, on the material itself, so you always have to try. This is something similar with a cork. Uh, on it in order to, to have more grip on it. It's just, for me the problem with these things is that the, the cork is never in the right place for, for my thumb, so it, it, it always feels strange. <laughs> I find it just difficult to hold because of the cork is it's not in the right place and 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 it's it's for me impossible to, to put my thumb really where, where I want it. So next one, this is really interesting. Uh, this is something I bought recently. It's Dunlop. They come in packages like this, packages of twelve. They're not expensive and they're really nice uh, kind of uh, celluloid. The quality of the celluloid is, is really excellent. I think this is some of the best celluloid I've seen. Um, this shape is quite small, quite rounded. But the sound is really good. <laughs>
that comfortable. For me, I'm used to the larger plectrums, of course, but still, this this is quite impressive for a newly bought, bought plectrum with no modification. You just use it as you receive it, and it, it sounds quite nice. This is very com comparable to the galley plectrums. It's just this is the the sound is a little more smooth because it is more rounded. You see, these are a little narrower, and although this uh, the thickness is about the same as the medium galley, it's a little more rounded because of the shape of the point. And of course, you can also modify the galley plectrum. And, and this is actually a galley plectrum that I uh, modified into a more narrow shape. Um, it's just that this was a medium one and I should have taken a heavy one that would have been better for the sound. Now it's a little bit too bright. It's just because it's now, now narrower it, it has become more flexible so a heavy one would, would have been better in this uh, shape. It's just something, you can try so many things, it's uh, not always easy to predict in advance what, uh, what the result is going to be. Um, these two are Japanese plectrums, I think from the 1980s and 90s, this might be more recent. But this is celluloid, this is, I think, nylon. The celluloid one sounds really nice. It's with, with that size of plectrum, the thickness about 0.7 or 0.8 of a millimeter. Uh, and the, the point, which, which is again very similar to a Roman plectrum, this makes a really nice sound. small but the, the, the sound is quite good. The nylon sounds quite different. With the nylon I always have the problem of hearing the texture of the material. Even if it's well polished and, and really smooth uh, I always have the impression that I there is something a little bit scratchy about the sound and I have the same thing with the uh, nylon Dunlop plectrums, these ones. So these are 0 0.73, 0 0.88 and 1 millimeter, but they always have the same problem. <laughs> Here, some, some of the texture of, uh, of the nylon. Also, with the nylon, the, the material is much more difficult to hold, it's, uh, it's very, it slips very easily from your fingers. It's uh, Even if there is some um, engraving and text on it, so, so you, you have a little bit more grip on it, I still feel the grip is a bit of a problem for me. The one millimeter one is the, the best of the three for me. Also, the, the, the tip is a little more pointed than these two. 
Um, what else have we got? These three are imitation ivory. This is these are quite old, from around 1900. Um, this is one Howard, and but it's too thin. This is really flexible. <laughs> This is really too thin, this is too flexible. This is a little less flexible. Still too, still too flexible as well. This one is quite good. This is about 0.6 or 7 of a millimeter. not bad quite good it's just I wouldn't know where to get these these are so old but if you happen to find them somewhere they might sound quite good um, these are some Clayton plectrums which I think are quite popular with uh, for guitar players 0.94 millimeter and 0.8 millimeter but this one they feel quite okay and they're nice but I think these are probably nylon as well. I have the same problem as with these that I hear the texture of the of the plectrum. But the, the thickness and the flexibility is, is quite nice actually. Then these are, I put them here just, just to show you, but these sound quite good on a guitar, but on a mandolin they're, they're no good. This is horn and this is quite thick and um, the sound it, it produces is just not good. <laughs> Tremolo certainly it's not. It produces many side noises and, and clicking and, and everything. Um, these are all the same. This is this is the worst of all. Although it sounds nice on a guitar, on a mandolin it's really so this is way too thick and, and there is no flexibility in, in this plectrum. Um, so mainly what you see is uh, what is important is the thickness and the shape of the point and the thinner your plectrum is the more rounded you want the point to be uh, and with that you can play with the sound and make it more round or more bright and, and um, I think that's also what you see um, with the guitar plectrums they are quite a bit wider like these shapes, this one, that, um, even then, this is just a Django button. Of course, it, this is not just to show you if if it's really wide. I I don't think you can go any wider than than this. Uh, this is used on a guitar and probably sounds quite well, but uh, you cannot produce a decent sound on a mandolin with this. Um, celluloid, you also find them in other colors, but they don't look so nice, I think. And maybe you can have the same sound result if you have the same thickness. Um, other than that, many people use uh, these German plectrums. I think that is also some kind of nylon or rubber or something in between. Uh, these are very often used with the German mandolins and in combination with flat wound strings. I don't like them. It's just the sound, to me it, it kills the sound of the mandolin, but I just wanted to show you what... They 
just make a mandolin sound really, really different. It, uh, it, it uh, takes away the high harmonics and you can improve these a little by shaping the points. Like this one for instance, it's got a sharper point and it's, uh, the edges are really smooth and then it sounds better. <laughs> Still, I don't think it it produces not a nice mandolin sound, but that's just my opinion. Uh, this is just a curiosity. It's all also also a German plectrum made of felt. And I, I think it's made in order to uh, imitate pizzicato. <laughs> Okay, of course now the thing is where do I get a plectrum? Where can I find a plectrum? Um, these new ones in celluloid are easy to find and buy. It's just the old ones in, in tortoiseshell, that's difficult of course. Uh, if you find old ones then you can still use them and reshape them and you can probably get quite quite a few years of use out of uh, such a plectrum. So that, that is interesting. But I think I will have to make a new video about how to reshape plectrums and how to polish them and, and how to make them usable. Because when you find an old, an old plectrum like this in a case, it, this one sounds horrible, so you really have to do something about it. And, and the material is excellent, it's really good material. Uh, so uh, I will have to show you in, an, in the next video how you can make these playable and, and make them have a nice sound. Um, I think that's all for now. So see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.